Yes, hello there. Uh, Matka M here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, an artist slash art writer, critic. Now, as Melbourne or YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. So, right here we are in the head of uh, Kampala, Kampala City. And like, right here in uh, one of the uh, upscale neighborhoods of the, the city and uh, they asked well, why are we here so we're next to a Japanese uh, this is a Japanese restaurant and uh, in here we have uh, an exhibition uh, there's a gallery a new gallery that opened up about a month ago and it's uh, yeah let's go in let's go in and see yeah so yeah where we at uh, we say the premises of the restaurant, uh, there's a gallery called The Capsule. Gallery now, we're walking in, there are some beautiful people around the place. Uh, yeah, uh, we have some art on the walls, interesting uh, mirrors all over the place. And there we are. Uh, yeah, the restaurant is up there, it's a Japanese restaurant. There are no business there. Our business is uh, art related. Here we are, the entrance of the capsule gallery. So yeah, interesting uh, exhibition statement here. And all the info about the artist exhibiting. Or do Ronalds. The title of the show is the Republic of this and that. Yeah. Some more info about the artist. Yeah, it seems like a wooden book with glass. Very well uh, thought through. I wonder who curated this show. It must be one of the. Actually, it's one of the artists who's uh, part of uh, uh, the studio lab. A proper scene. That is uh, the artist is part of Odun Rad is part of Afropocin and the artist who helped create the show is Letaro Galega. So there we go, uh, entrance. Let's, let's go right in. Uh, we are lucky enough to have the artist in presence. Hey, Pre how are you? Uh, there we go. <laughs> artist Odun Rad, Uganda yeah. artist, Kampala artist. So there we are. Those are the treasures on the walls. Yeah. All right. The capsule gallery is a new space. Very interesting uh, alternative space. Uh, different from what we usually have. Uh, very, quite a small space, but it has been well uh, utilized. That's the exhibition statement over there. So, The Republic of This and That is an exhibition by uh, Odu Ronald. And uh, it's very documented about uh, yeah, the transportation and the issues and complexities of free movement on the continent. And his motifs, or his, uh, what he employs, is uh, plays around with the passport. I mean, these books have been around for. I don't know. Less than uh, I think they were brought in after the Second World War. I read that somewhere. I don't remember if I remember very well. So they've been around. There are very some interesting politics around these passports. Where should you go? At what time should you be there? Who allows you to enter which territory? So, but then also when you go to the Afghan continent, there's so many. It's very funny. We, we, it's, we can't move around that much, really. It's very expensive to start with, to travel within Africa. Also, it's very precarious. Uh, I mean, yeah, just that beat. So, yeah, let's go back to the work before we jump into the politics. So, what we have here is. Uh, this is an installation, as you can see. 
Wadu makes this passport sort of the metallic aluminium plates. That's what he uh, works with. And all, everything is about is uh, from the aluminium uh, plates. He weaves these around with some uh, copper wire. Very interesting. Intricate technique right there. Look at that. That's almost like a mat woven out of aluminium plates. Interesting stuff. Yeah. It's that. I think this is, these are two pieces separate. Um, yeah, this could be the title of uh, one of these installations. Yeah, and then there's some uh, box on the walls. Some uh, printed out uh, copies of the metallic passports. Let's go back to this ins installation. I want to see. I want you to see the details on this Arabic passport. Very interesting. It's a very documentary, probably of the undocumented. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. This is a uh, public of any zero tokens. That's very really interesting. What do you have here? And document it again. Republic of Nibumba, Nibumba is second hand clothes, Republic of Religions, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Republic of Farmers, here we are. And they made it again, mostly everything is undocumented, like it is within the African continent. Things just pass by, opportunities now. Yes. Here we go. All right, an interesting show, very interesting. Might have some questions for Mr. Odo right there. So to remind you or to tell you a little bit about Odo, he has been uh, selected to be at the, the next Dakar Binali. Yeah. Uh, as part of uh, the next Dakar Biennale, is it going to be next year? Yeah, it's going to be next year in May. In May, that's very interesting. I think you're going to be the first sugar under the, uh, the Dakar Biennale. So, okay, allow me to please take this back. After doing some little research, I just discovered that uh, Imi Mali was the first sugar at the Dakar Biennale back in 2020. And she represented the country in this uh, prestigious event. Really? Yeah, you must be a person that you know you have the, 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 the car being had. Okay. It's crazy. People are not, of uh, course, they've never been there. So, how do you feel about this? Yeah. Uh, the biggest being had in uh, the African continent. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Uh, I don't know. For me, I, I think I knew I was going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I put my head and my mind out of it when I, I, I was in Senegal mm -hmm. uh, last year mm -hmm. in December. And I was told about the Dakar Biennale and how everything is. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting for me and I thought it through to be part of it. So. For me, it's not a surprise of a bit of it because I just knew I was going to. Absolutely. I think your work would fit in very well. It's, it's, it's uh, bring up much needed conversations of the continent. So, and I think really your work is on the stage like that to be, you know, engaged with, uh, with the other, you know, uh, whistleblowers from the continent, other people with the same uh, ideologies or in the same kind of space or. Uh, area of thoughts. So congrats again. Congrats, congrats. Thank you. So yeah, this exhibition, how long has it been up? Uh, this exhibition has been up for now we are going to the is it the fourth or fifth week now? Mm. 
because it opened on the 11th of November. That's when it opened and now uh, it's going to be up until December and then we'll have another uh, exhibition here on the 6th mm. with another artist. Yeah. So, Udu, why this space? Why did you put up your... Is this a body of work? Is this possible to say? Is it a complete body of work or is it an ongoing body Actually, um, this wasn't in the plan this year. In the day plan, to have an exhibition this year. Because I had some of the video challenges with uh, uh, my life and all these things. Um, but then the people I work with, Afro Postin, they were like, okay, we, we have this space. How about you be the first uh, artist to show it since you're you're an Afro-Persian artist mm. and I had this body of work which is ongoing mm. and they experimented with printing and my work is mostly about uh, aluminium mm. uh, so they experimented with printing and finding ways of getting prints of my work mm. yeah, so that's how uh, the, the exhibition happened actually but then uh, this uh, body of work has been interesting uh, because I, I started creating this work when I was in the Silhouette Residency at Afri Art. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I, I left the, the work for some time and then came back to it. I think this is the second year I'm uh, really indulging into this body of work and it is taking its twists and turns in different uh, aspects. Yeah, and it is still, I'm still moving along with it and I believe there's a lot that is going to, 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 to surface from mm. this body of work. Because mm. this is uh, one of the critical and uh, critical things that is happening on the, on the global like uh, movement and access. Mm. So how am I talking about all these things as an artist in my work? Mm. And I think me personally, I've not yet got any problems with traveling. Mm. But then uh, other people have, and also, anyway, I've got in some little bit of challenges. Uh, but then uh, there are not that much of like huge challenges for now. Mm. But then I see like unfairness because if you're coming to Uganda, mm. you just need like two things, or mm. it's not that much uh, difficult to, to get a Ugandan visa or even travel to Uganda. Mm. But if you're going to Europe, it is. They, they want to know if you're married, mm -hmm. like all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, I think this, uh, th th we have to talk about these things in our work. Yeah, and, and, and with, the, with the kind of work I create is based on like uh, social political issues and interactions in this contemporary world. So mm -hmm. I believe, yeah, this body of work can talk about a lot of things for me. Absolutely. I think you mentioned everything that maybe you want to ask. But, uh, you mentioned earlier on uh, that uh, you had challenges in your life yeah. this year, and you, I think you tried to the accident you had earlier this year, which is yes. very bad. Uh, yes. And uh, when I was coming in, you mentioned you talked to me about how you were making those. Uh, I think we should head up and uh, go and talk about the uh, uh, the maths on the floor. Yeah. Uh, so because those uh, I found them very interesting. Yes. Uh, we could, um, yeah, I have a chat about uh, how you came up with uh, these maths because they're connected to your challenges you had uh, earlier this year. So, uh, what's, what's with the maths? Uh, actually, the, the maths, you can, you can take a close up uh, look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the maths. This work I first showed it at the African Union mm. residency in Senegal mm. and then it was shown again at the African Union uh, headquarters in, in Addis Ababa. Mm. So this month, uh, when we were at the residency, we were like uh, five artists from different parts of uh, Africa mm. and then we had conversations and I saw like there are a lot of uh, similarities in our cultures. Mm. So. For me, metaphorically, I use this mat as uh, the, the, the idea of like our intertwined woven cultures. Mm. And then we are limited by boundaries with the passports. Like 
in, to access different countries. Like those are the borders I'm talking about. And, and for me, I found it like a challenge, yet we have like similarities in our cultures. And also another thing I can mention, particularly these mats, mm -hmm. I, we, I wove them uh, with my family, with my friends, with the um, visitors who came along uh, at our place or our home. I, I, I was going through like quite a depression from the accident I got where I broke my, my, my left arm. Mm. Uh, so for me, when I was in the hospital, a lot of people came together and supported me in different ways, emotionally, physically, economically, and all these things. So with this work also, I was trying to, to recreate this idea of like collectiveness, whereby in Luganda they say you cannot clap with one arm, mm. so you, can, you have to clap with two arms two hands so this work i created it with all everyone around me so it was like a collective kind of effort even though i'm sharing it still in, with these passports because mm. if you, if people are limited by boundaries to go and reach to different places to access different places it's like you want to just uh, do your things like alone but if we, we collectively work together access spaces access uh like people i believe we will have like uh, some growth like beyond even like working only solely like as a, as one person or as a nation yeah so basically yeah so people also ask me a lot about burning the material mm -hmm. uh, i just ask them questions like why don't you ask uh, a person who paints on canvas why do they paint on canvas or why do they use paint mm -hmm. because for me i think at some point that that doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. but then the reason that's why I burn it is because I used to use these materials. I used to collect them as crap. So I used to get them on the, uh, when they are burnt on the, on the rubbish bin. And then I find them when they are burnt. But then I was interested in the burning. It was quite, quite interesting for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I carried it on with, with the burning. It doesn't also make sense for me to just have like a plain kind of uh, material like metallic material mm -hmm. yeah, this gives it some little bit of character absolutely yeah, yeah 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 you can feel that uh, yeah of course do you how do you burn yeah. these uh do you use a, a torch do you use a candle do you use a, a lighter uh, actually, I, I use um papers mm. i use papers to, to burn the material um if i may add on something mm. my work is is, is evolving in different aspects mm. from where I get the material from, from how I access the material, from how I use the material, from how the material is. So for me, I get this material from Nasaro, one of the biggest printing places in Kampala. Mm. And these are printing plates. Mm. So these printing plates also print on paper. So there's a collaboration between the paper that I use to burn the material and also the material itself. That's, that's yeah. very interesting. And also... It makes for a wholesome uh, composition. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. also another dimension onto the passports is like, uh, I don't know if we can go to the Republic of Chieyo uh, or something, mm -hmm. but... We could look for it. Yeah, uh, yeah the Republic of Chieyo. Right we don't have the, the original passport, mm. uh, it is in a, in a collection, mm. but the Republic of Cheyo is like, Cheyo means to go to, to look for greener pastors in different countries. Mm. So when you're applying for a visa or uh, you're applying for, let me say, like for a passport, some people don't have these documents and people go to steal NASA Road where I get my materials from to go and duplicate these documents mm -hmm. and then so that they go and access these greener pastures. So for me, my work is going even beyond the idea of the passport to the, to the idea of personhood, belonging, like our future, what do we believe in, what, do, what are our dreams, mm -hmm. yeah. Whereby I'm, I'm also going past the passports to how do people access like these documents, how are people documented, how do we document ourselves when 
we did have these passports like the Baganda document themselves as Tambla and Uganda. Mm -hmm. So there's a passport I created called the Republic of Totem OMB Zero where mm -hmm. you saw it earlier there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you have to uh, recite your ancestral lineage mm -hmm. to, to, to capture all these things and then you're like, okay, this is this person, this is Matt Kayem, what mm -hmm. is this do? Mm -hmm. Because even us in the Langi we have kind of a similar uh, thing whereby we, this that is how we document ourselves like I'm from this kind of ancestral lineage. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I saw down there there was a, a writing Ichisakat. Is that the title of uh, one of the uh, uh, the installations? Actually, Ichisakat was mm. uh, a piece of work. Actually, an installation uh, that I I showed at 32 degrees for mm. the opening. It was uh, commissioned by 32 degrees and supported by the Prince Klaus Fund. Mm. Uh, since I was one of the awardees, people they awarded the. Uh, the Prince Klaus mm. 2020. So I created the piece, uh, the installation in Sakate, where I suspended 50 passports in two door frames. Mm. And this piece was called it Sakate because it's Sakate is an enclosure mm. from the Baganda, it's an enclosure with reeds and all these things, like whereby kings are. Allocated where they are staying, so mm. they are put in Bisakate. Mm. And so for me, I got that idea of like boundaries being set to, to, to protect something or a certain class. Mm. And then I took that ideally and conceptually to the idea of the passports and then the borders. Yeah, so that work, uh, this work came from uh, Senegal and then. It went to 32 degrees in a different format with the door frame. Hmm. And then right now we're having it in a different kind of a twisted format with the chair and everything like this set up. Yeah, it is still evolving and I'm really happy about that. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. All right. That's an uh, interesting uh, you know, explanation of everything. So uh, who curated this show? Uh, because it has a very interesting, it is well set up and everything is, uh, looks. Uh, Actually, yeah. Letaro, Letaro is the one who curated this show mm. and um, supported by also like the focusing members, Martin, mm. uh, Baya, Noel, yeah, all those people. Yeah, but, uh, mm. uh, Letaro is the one who. Curated the show. She's also an artist and did amazing work. <laughs> yeah. So, as a member of uh, Afrobosine Studio Lab, what is you might know the future of uh, this place. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could uh, throw in a bit about uh, what you guys have in store without uh, spilling so much beans. <laughs> actually, let me first talk about why this space was opened up. Mm. Uh, actually, the space was opened up to to introduce art and make affordable like uh, art to, to, the, to Ugandans to be mm. able to buy the works like mm. creating like prints of the work mm. because I believe like uh, Ugandans might not understand the installation or they might not afford to buy the installation mm. but they can afford to buy a print mm. or they can afford to buy like uh, uh, the, the, the cards, the postcards mm -hmm. yeah so the space is trying to make affordable art to the local Ugandans. Maybe they will also grab that culture of collecting and they start uh, like buying like original prints or original artworks. Yeah, that is the, one of the main re reasons uh, this place was open up. And also, as mm. I've seen, it's a, a researching, experimental mm. uh, kind of space mm. and studio whereby Artists experiment with materials, ideas, technology, and all these things. So, all these things are exhibited here. If the artist like finishes, maybe a residency or what. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And um, on the sixth, we are going to have another exhibition here. Mm. And I believe few people will come and, and uh, for the opening. It is going to be on the sixth. Sixth January. January two thousand twenty-four. Uh, we are going to be having Kadiwaswa's 
archive, mm. uh, which is going to be curated, I believe, by Andrea. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so God please, is you, should, awesome. you should come and check out like um, the amazing archives mm. uh, things you have not yet seen. And you can also purchase your prints, postcards, we still have more postcards, the passports. Mm. Uh, we also have, we're going to be having the ones with Kadua, so we still have prints of the passport and Kadua, so mm. please, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for taking us around the exhibition and for a little interview there, uh, or do. And so, well, how long does this exhibition still appear? How long do people still have to get to this place to see your work? Uh, this place is at Ujo, uh, Chando on the road, 36. Mm. Mm. Are the six. So you can just maybe uh, follow Afropocene on Instagram and maybe send them a message, a DM. Mm. Uh, or you can also send me a message, or you can ask Matt Kayev too on the, the page. He will give mm -hmm. some more details to, to talk here. Uh, I believe the, the exhibition is going to be until uh, December, this December, and then we'll have another exhibition here. So you just let me know for Matt Kayev or Afropocene Studio or mm -hmm. uh, Afropocene Capsule Gallery on Instagram, and then you let us know. Then I come and personally, I'll come and show you around. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. All right, people, thanks for uh, watching this uh, wonderful video. It's been Matt Kayem, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, Mr. Odu Ronald's uh, exhibition. Uh, please pass by, like I said, if you still have some time, you can get one of these uh, wonderful postcards. I got one like this, is very interesting. I should get this one. Right? But I got this one. I think I got this one. I have this one. But yeah, I should uh, get some a little more money. You could uh, get one of these uh, prints. Looks so beautiful. Oh, friend. If you even have more money, you could uh, acquire one of these installations. I don't know. Because this is a museum status stuff. So, uh, or even you can uh, collect. Could even collect yes. A collectible passport yes. with. More pages, something, whatever you want to do. But uh, it's also very good to come around the exhibition. Maybe, maybe they are just uh, you never know, something might change. Uh, they knew and how you think about uh, the certain issues. All right, then, I'll be my career, see you around.